cool. Là. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background experience? Yes, uh, actually my background, uh, which might come as a surprise uh, given the uh, field where we are working, my background is not engineering and not as well the uh, military. So I can okay. always say that this is not, uh, in a sense, my hobby what I'm doing, but this is something which I, I take as a business. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, why exactly that uh, field? Because I believe that robotics will be the uh, greatest game changer in terms of the uh, value creation and productivity for the uh, humankind. So I see that robotics will change uh, many different fields. Today, we are focused on the uh, defense and military, but in reality, we see that robotics will be applied in many uh, verticals, like in forestry, firefighting, agriculture, and eventually as well, the uh, space exploration. Okay, okay. Alors, we are excited to learn what inspire you to start Miran Robotic, and what is, the, what, what is the vision and mission beyond that? Well, we started already for the ground robotics uh, pretty early on. We started in 2014, and okay. actually we analyzed the market that what will be in defense sector the next uh, technology which will change the battlefield or which will bring the uh, disruptive change. And we used the analogy of the uh, drones or the aerial uh, uh, robotic systems. And we projected it uh, to the ground robotics field. Back in 2014, of course, everybody uh, considered that you are the crazy guys who are dealing with something which nobody will never use and the technology will not uh, be ready for that, etc. Of course, now, uh, 10 years later, uh, It is uh, glad to see that actually we were right. So uh, today everybody is talking about, especially in defense, everybody is talking about the ground robotics and how the robotics will shape the uh, battlefield. Okay. Why, we are, why we are doing and what is the purpose of the Milram Robotics, uh, we, we phrase the purpose in a manner that we enable more meaningful lives. And if you translate it, then uh, first of all, we develop robotics to protect people, to uh, keep the people in the safety. Okay. But secondly, as well, that robot, robots will do the, so to say, dull and dirty tasks. So uh, starting from there, we believe and we see that in uh, different sectors like forestry, agriculture, mining, robots can do things what today humans are doing okay. and that will release people more time to focus on more creative uh, tasks. So in general, I think that if you look at the uh, development of the AI and development of the robotics, we can see that certain professions are uh, disappearing in coming years. And okay. uh, this is inevitable. So, and to find the common uh, nominator for these uh, professions, I, I think that they are just repetitive tasks where people have been doing really, uh, uh, how do you put it, really dull tasks and dull job. Okay. And uh, so young people who are looking into the uh, studying something and studying uh, the new profession, then my recommendation always is that think about the creativity, think about the things where neither AI and uh, robotics uh, can replace uh, uh, humans. And one example here is, for example, engineering. So I always recommend the young people to study engineering because if you, especially if you are more on the system architecture side of okay. the robotics and the engineering, then that will be uh, certainly necessary, uh, necessary task and necessary skill in future as well. But moving back to the, uh, to the uh, purpose of the company, the another part is to protect the people. So we, as you uh, very well know, we are today very strongly in the defense sector. And we always say that we are protecting, we are developing the robotic systems to protect the people, not to, uh, not to uh, do the offensive tasks, but to the defensive tasks. And even if we integrate the weapon system uh, on the uh, robot, then it's to protect our troops. And unfortunately, what we see in very uh, unfortunate war in Ukraine, we yes. so say evil has not disappeared from the world. So uh, we may need uh, tools to protect our soldiers 
uh, in the battlefield, and we need tools to keep our uh, troops in the in the safety. Okay, okay, that's impressive. And uh, I saw your conference uh, on YouTube, and I want to know now: autonomous battlefield is the future or is fiction? Is future or is fiction? It is already now. So if you look at the uh, what is ongoing in Ukraine, I think that the uh, drones, aerial systems, have demonstrated that they are very uh, useful and central tools in the war fighting. Okay. And yes, that is not the autonomy what uh, people have seen in the Terminator movies. And that kind of autonomy will never uh, be there. That's out of the question. But still, uh, the, the uh, robotic systems already right now provide better information, provide the uh, better uh, ways how to protect yourself and better ways how to uh, disable the, uh, the adversaries. Okay. So uh, in the drone sector, we can see that surveillance and uh, information gathering is very important. And another uh, sector which has uh, uh, proven itself in the Ukraine is the loitering munition, which was before just an idea. The ground robotics is uh, just about to come, uh, come along with that as well. For example, from Milram right now, there are some systems already in Ukraine in service. And we are uh, just about to send another set of uh, systems there as well. And in our case, what we do in Ukraine today, or what our robots do in Ukraine, is uh, casualty evacuation, which yeah. today actually it's a very hard task for the troops because you need to send two to four uh, soldiers under the fire to uh, bring back the wounded soldier. Instead of that, you can now send the uh, robotic uh, system. And the uh, second task is as well uh, very, uh, very clear. It's uh, route clearance, which means that removing the unexploded ordinances, removing the mines, once again, which is something which people do basically by hand today and which is by far not uh, safe. So better to do it with robotics. But if you look at the longer vision of the robotic battlefield, then at least in foreseeable future, it mm -hmm. will always be a mix of manned and unmanned systems. We will not see fully robotic units or fully robotic forces to be deployed. We always see that uh, robotics is not replacing people, but enhancing people. So okay. exactly, pro giving pot better protection, giving better firepower, giving, giving better information but not replacing the boots on the ground, but uh, uh, providing the better, uh, better tools for that. And where we see where it's moving, that uh, it has started from the smaller uh, size platforms, but we are going to see pretty soon as well where the robotic wingmen will support the infantry fighting vehicles and main battle tanks. And exactly the same purpose, but if you have one uh, main battle tank, on the battlefield, which is uh, basically supported by the four robotic wingmen, then you have much better uh, firepower with the same yes. amount of the crew. And at the same time, you can keep your crewed vehicle or manned vehicle in the more safe position and send the robotic systems to expose the adversaries and to take the high risk positions. Wow. Can you share any advice for aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah who are interested in start a robotic company like yours? Well, I, I have used uh, two uh, words for it, and uh, those are to be naive and stubborn. Okay. And what, I, what I mean by that is that entrepreneur has to be visionary. Uh, mm -hmm. Entrepreneur needs to believe in something which seems not realistic for uh, most of the people. Because mm -hmm. if you want to do something, uh, if you want to achieve something new on the market, then you should not just copy others, but you should think about what is the uh, advantage what, of what you are doing and how you can do something differently. And most importantly, how you can make the difference and make okay. the difference for your uh, customers, for your partners. Because eventually as an entrepreneur, you are not just service provider, but you are partner for your customers and you help them to solve a certain problem or you help them to uh, get better capabilities or to get better, uh, better solutions. So that is, in a sense, the naive part. So it's not so much the naive, but it's more about being visionary. Mm 
The, stubborn, okay. the stubbornness comes along with uh, difficulties because I believe that every entrepreneur has seen on his route lots of uh, risks, lots of uh, problems to solve and lots of challenges. Okay. And uh, even if it seems that it's really difficult to tackle them, you shouldn't give up. You should really believe in your vision and you should really go with it. And uh, obviously, uh, aside of these two uh, two uh, uh, items, what is important is to find the right uh, team because you can't do anything alone. You need uh, smart and passionate people uh, next to you who are working together with you on, on that vision and who help that vision to be uh, realized.